This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. Plan on paying less for the coverage you need with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote today at fbhp.com. I'm Mike Keith. Titans on day three, beginning with Cedric Gray, linebacker from North Carolina. Coach Mack, were you surprised that Cedric Gray was available at number 106? That's kind of where we had him pegged. Yeah, you know, at, at the end of the third, you know, uh, or the middle of the fourth round, I liked him a lot at the Senior Bowl. This guy's a really good space linebacker. Key and diagnose is excellent. Very, very active. I mean, made a lot, a lot of tackles. He, he, he was good at the Senior Bowl. He did a nice job in coverage at the Senior Bowl. And also, this is a guy, you know, as a – Longtime linebacker coach you like because he's got a GPS to the ball. He gets to the football. So this is about where I thought he would go. Frank Bush will help him a lot, being able to learn to shock and shed. Most of these linebackers coming out now uh, don't use their hands very well early on because they're more slip and dip and run guys. He'll learn to use his hands with Frank Bush. Rhett Bryant, if you would, give us a thumbnail on Cedric Gray, linebacker from North Carolina, please. Cedric Gray is 6'1 and 4'8. He is 234 pounds, 4'6, 4 4 in the 40, hands 9 inches, arm 32 and a half, wing nearly 79 inches, 21 years old, and uh, I think 121 tackles last year, all ACC. He's a tackling machine. In high school, he was a wide receiver safety. He wore number 11 because he dreamed of being Julio Jones. He was on Drake May's 7-on-7 seven seven team growing up. Well, he gets to North Carolina. Guess what? You're going to defense. Guess what? You're going to linebacker. And by the middle of his sophomore year, he's a full-time starter at linebacker and started from there on out. Coach where can he add to the Titans most quickly? Well, he's he's a behind the ball linebacker. He can, I think, he can help. I think if, he's a three down linebacker. He can help, you know, with three downs. And as you say, Rhett just mentioned the dimensions with his arms. You know, I, I said earlier, Frank Bush will teach him how to shock and shed because you've got to learn how to do that. I mean, to me, I mean, this guy's got a chance to be an eventual starter behind the line of scrimmage for all three downs. He may be a pretty quick starter with where the Titans are in terms of depth at linebacker right now. He'll certainly have a chance. At this moment in time, the Titans have eight inside linebackers on the roster. That includes Otis Reese, Chance Campbell, JoJo Doman, Jack Gibbons, Garrett Wallow, Kenneth Murray, Luke Gifford, and now Cedric Gray, rookie from North Carolina. Amy Wells, in looking at this group, You see not a lot of experience, obviously not a tremendous amount of depth. Murray, the signee from the Chargers, plays kind of a different position in the linebacking course. There's not really competition there. Did the Titans potentially find a starter in round four, maybe even a day one starter? Well, it's very possible, and that's one of the things that was asked of him by the Titans kind of – scouts and people that he talked to just on the phone with him was you know you you could be a guy you know that right are you ready for that he's a smart guy and that's what they were looking for someone who really is able to conduct that defense if they need to I mean if you're a guy that's starting at that middle linebacker position you're orchestrating all of that stuff you're the guy that is communicating all of those things to everybody else so is this a potential person who could come in and make an impact We'll have to see, but there's definitely that possibility there, to your point, because there's a lot of young guys there. There's not someone that's super established. He did not make a 30 visit to Nashville. The Titans did not interview him in one of the 18-minute sessions at the Combine. Maybe they had a breeze by at the Senior Bowl to say, hi, how unusual is it that you draft a guy in the fourth round as he said, he didn't remember having any contact with the team. Well, I, 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 I think Frank Bush probably had talked to him in the, what they call the train station, those types of things. So I, 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 would, I trust what's going on with Rand Carthon and this group, but I really trust Frank Bush. Coached a lot of years with him. He is, 
he's an OG of linebacker coaches. So this, this, you know, Gray is coming in here under some really, really veteran tutelage. Mac, is this a situation where maybe what you see on the tape, what you've heard from other people, you feel like you know enough about a guy just from interactions from other people who might know him and then what you've seen to, to feel comfortable with saying, yep, we want him to be a Titan. Well, again, going back to all of my history with Frank Bush, Frank Bush started out as a scout in this league for the Houston Oilers. He started out under C.O. Bricado, and all the years I've sat with Frank, he's a, he's a really good evaluator of, of talent, especially on the hoof, before we used to have all this other, other things. So that's, that's where I trust implicitly on that. So this kid's going to be getting some top-notch coaching the, from day one when he steps in here. I've got no problem with this. Just too good to pass up and maybe a player you didn't think would be at 106? Well, I, again, as I say, on our, on our, on our sheet, we kind of had him there. You know? But, I, you know, I talked about him when we were sitting up there at the Senior Bowl. You know, if you keep watching him, especially during the individual drills, and then he shows up in team because he's just got, as I call it, a GPS to the football, knows how to get there, still needs some more technical help. Uh, and I'm going to keep uh, reiterating this because all linebackers do regardless coming out now. They've got to learn how to use their hands because you can't, you can't shoulder up uh, offensive linemen in the National Football League or they'll swallow you up. Titans bring in a guy in the fifth round at number 146, Jarvis Brownlee, cornerback from Louisville. Rhett Bryan, what can you tell us about the Miami native? He is 5'10 and 3'8", 194. And he's long for that size because he's a little undersized. Almost a 76-inch wingspan at his pro day, 4.51 in the 40, 31.5-inch vertical leap, a three-cone drill mic of 6.94. And here's the thing that stands out about him. He is feisty, he is physical, and he is disruptive. 28 pass breakups in his collegiate career. 28. He prepped at Carroll City High School in Miami Gardens, Florida, signed with Florida State, three seasons in Tallahassee, only a full-time starter in 2021, 51 hits, five passes defensed, and two interceptions. Transferred to Louisville, made 22 starts over his last two seasons, totaled 96 hits, 21 passes defensed, and three interceptions. He finished his college career with six interceptions total, an excellent member of the punt coverage unit in all five of his collegiate seasons. You like that, Coach? Well, I, I like this player. I, I, I sat with his college coach. He's one of the college coaches I sat with it, at the Combine, you know, while he was working and got a pretty good – now, we liked him at the Senior Bowl, too. He had a good he had a good Senior Bowl down there in Mobile – he showed up. You know, feisty is a really good word for it. This is a physical, physical player. I mean, he likes to get into the mix, and he gets into the mix. Uh, I like this pick because right there at this pick, you're looking for guys that have traits. His traits is he loves ball. He loves ball. He's got really good – You know that, that three-cone tells you he's got really good transitional ability as far as start-stop, short area space, and plus, you know, all, all of this special teams – uh, background that you that you put out there you know that a guy that has that type of background especially coming out of college just loves to be on the field playing playing ball uh, that, and again i had a little bit more inside intel because i sat with his coach uh, at at louisville who is a pretty well-known defensive back coach in the collegiate game uh good pick april 2nd he visited ascension st thomas sports park titans had him targeted to be in this area on day three. And so the the bullseye hit here with Jarvis Brownlee, Amy, uh, Coach Mack said it, Rhett said it. Here's how he was described in notes that I got. Ultra aggressive, ultra competitive, played well both as an outside corner and in the slot. Um, this sounds like what new defensive coordinator Denard Wilson, what secondary coach Chris Harris what assistant secondary coach Steve Jackson wants exactly. Coach Max says it, traits. Absolutely. The notes that I had written down were right mentality for the Titans secondary because every description that we have heard of what they're looking for is a guy who, 
is just a, kind of a, a monster. Someone who's going to be the guy that you are so happy he plays for your team, but everybody else in the world thinks he's a jerk. <laughs> you know, that kind <laughs> of guy. He enjoys getting in the mind of the people he's playing against. He likes to talk. He likes to be really aggressive and stay on guys and pick at them. And he's just a guy who's obnoxious and in your dish and the guy that you love to have on your team. Well, he'll be he'll be in the in the facility as long as they'll let him, because this guy this guy will, it will be a film junkie, and then he'll be out on the field as as long as he needs to, as long as he needs to be getting ready, prepared. He will soak up again, you know, talking with his with his coach there at Louisville. He'll he'll soak up anything that you've got, and uh, that's what you want. And you know, of course, you know how well I know Denard and and you know Stevie J. That's what they're looking for. Didn't they call them dogs? And it was an acronym. And you can't say it. I can't say it on the radio. I don't even remember what it was, but it basically was aggressive guys, and they called them dogs. You said worse. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) I don't remember what it was, but I remember it. I couldn't say it. (laughs) Jarvis Brownlee is the ninth cornerback currently on the Titans roster. The other players listed at corner, Caleb Farley, Cheeto Awuze, Roger McCrary, Trey Avery, Tay Gowan, Eric Gerrer, Legarius Sneed, Anthony Kendall. So there's some decent depth and I, I think some real life competition there. And, and I'm sure they're not through at that spot. No, they're not through at that spot. But it, let's go back a little bit to where we talk about Cedric Gray, the opportunity to play. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna take you know, probably six of these guys, you know, into into a into a live game, and so there's a chance. All right, so that's where the Titans are at cornerback after they bring in Jarvis Brownlee at pick 146. At pick 182 in the sixth round, Jaquan Jackson, friend of Tajay Spears from Tulane, 5'9", 182, a wide receiver who also had an excellent senior bowl. Rhett Bryan, he is not a big guy. No, he is 5'9", and an eighth, 188, Hands eight and seven eighths, uh, wing at seventy four and seven eighths. Ran a four four two forty at the combine, thirty two inch vertical leap, nine foot ten inch broad jump, and uh, he brings value not only as a receiver but he's a special teams guy in the return game. In the return game, fifty eight punt returns in his career for six hundred sixty four yards. So that puts him averaging over eleven yards per punt return. Did have one touchdown. It was for 90 yards. As a kickoff return man, 32 kickoff returns, an average of 22.9. Dave McGinnis with the new kickoff return rule, finding a guy not only with that 442 speed, but with that quickness and that burst. I mean, he's got a chance to put himself in the mix in that alone. Well, and also with the willingness, you know, being a double returner to throw yourself into the briar patch. Because that's it's extremely important. And what you're look, going to look for, especially now the way this kickoff return is going to be set up, you're looking for you're looking for immediate creases and cut and go. This guy is a speed is a speed player. He 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 is. I mean, he's a speed player that bringing double return ability. I mean, he's got a chance. And you you pointed it out very well. But you know the Titans are looking for a punt returner too. So this guy's got a chance to you know to fill a double role. Uh, when he comes in here, but you've got it on tape and you've got visual evidence that he can do this. And plus, this was an extremely fast, just overall group of receivers at the Combine. He fit right in there. Rhett Bryan uh, did not have a lot of catches in his career, did have eight touchdowns in 2022 receiving, also did some things on reverses and plays of that sort, but a slot guy with some potential to certainly get in the mix and to put some pressure on some guys already on the roster. Yeah, and again, he's one of those guys that that really kind of shined at the the Senior Bowl. But you're right, only 109 catches in five seasons at Tulane. Um, 1,743 yards receiving, average 16 a catch, 17 touchdowns. Titans right now at the wide receiver position by adding Tulane's Jaquan Jackson. Ten wide receivers, Calvin Ridley, Kiaris Jackson, who will be coming back from injury, the living legend DeAndre Hopkins, Mason Kenzie, Colton Dowell, who is coming off a knee injury, 
re-signed Nick Westbrook Akine, Traylon Burks, Kyle Phillips, and Treshawn Harrison. So you've got a battle right there that you can see. Yeah, and again, his his double return ability is gonna is gonna help him. And I, I would I would think that they're probably gonna take twelve to camp. That's that's kind of what I think, and especially the way this offense is going to be spread out. And so they'll make some couple of additions, but this guy automatically puts himself in a mix because you're talking about if you just let's talk about active roster game day. If you got a guy that can do double things of that, he can be your fifth receiver and and add value. You know, there, uh, there's a lot of different things that he can do on the field, but what speaks volumes to me is that he was roommates with Tajay Spears. And that vouches for his character to me. I mean, you get to pick your roommate, and we know that Tajay Spears is a good guy. He's not going to surround himself with people who are not hard workers. I think that that goes a long way and speaks to what we can expect to get on the field. I'm excited that he's here because I've got Tajay Spears kind of sticking up for him in my mind. And Tajay Spears actually went to Mobile Mm -hmm. during the first full week in February to be there to support Jaquan Jackson and a couple of other Tulane teammates there. What current NFL player decides to go back to the Senior Bowl? Tajay Spears. Tajay Spears. (laughs) Nobody. That's right. And so he was there, and uh, obviously they have that personal relationship, so he will be able to uh, give him the good word, if you will, about how you handle certain things. I think it speaks volumes. I really do. So we mentioned on the current Titans roster, they are at 70. They will take 90 to training camp. Currently 10 wide receivers with Jackson added. At this point, 12 offensive linemen – Free agent Sadiq Charles, J.C. Latham, who was the first-round draft pick, Daniel Brunskill, John Ajuku, who was on the practice squad last year, ended the season on the active roster, Jalen Duncan, who was a late pick a year ago, played some football, the recently obtained Leroy Watson from Cleveland, he's a tackle, Lachavius Simmons, who was on the practice squad last year from Tennessee State, Dylan Radens, who played the majority of last year at right tackle as the starter. Andrew Rupsich, who played some guard on the team a year ago. Peter Skaronsky, the 2023 first-round pick, starting left guard. Nicholas Petit-Frere, who was a 16-game starter at right tackle in 2022. And then free agent signee Lloyd Cushenberry has been a starter at center for the Denver Broncos for the last three years. Twelve guys at this point. Dave McGinnis, as they begin to fill out the rest of the roster, and that will happen with more free agents because the Titans do have more cap room. They could trade for people. That's a certainly, certainly a possibility. And they will get... Uh, players who go undrafted to agree to contracts, how many offensive linemen do you guess they would take to camp? No, 15 or 16. There's 15 or 16, so there, there, there's those spots. There, there's still spots available because what you'd like to have, you know, with your offensive linemen, and, you know, that 15 gives you three full units, uh, and 16, you know, if a guy just knocks your socks off, you know, in, in, in free agency that you'd like to bring in. 15 or 16 is what normally I'm used to. The number at tight end, Amy Wells, is still just three. Josh Wiley, Chigakonkwo, and Thomas Odukoya are the three guys under contract right now. Uh, the Titans certainly will be looking among veterans and undrafted. Yeah, that's definitely a position to watch. One thing that we have to remember is the free agency kind of churns back up after this because teams have to, A, make room for the guys that they just brought on. There's a lot of moving pieces when it comes to contracts and things like that still. There's just a lot of things still in the air right now. So there will be a fresh crop of free agency. We talk about waves. You know, there's the initial wave, then things kind of die down a little bit, and then we have the draft. And then after the draft, there's another wave of free agency where teams are kind of reevaluating their spots when they look at the numbers at certain positions, and everything kind of churns back up again for a little while. So that will definitely, definitely be an area where the Titans are going to be looking to add some more bodies to see what new talent they can bring in and see where they can have some bigger numbers, of course, for training camp, but then also to see what they can have going in that position. Rep. Brian, Amy Wells makes a good point with the phases of free agency. 
the difference for the Titans this year is they were able to really take part in the first phase, which they have not always been able to do financially. The second phase of free agency, which essentially ends today, um, they took part in. They did a few things, made a trade for Leroy Watson in the in that process too because they had room to absorb a contract and give away a, a seventh-round pick. And now for this third phase, guys are going to get cut after teams realize, hey, we've drafted a guy who can take his spot and we can save money. Guess what? We're going to put a guy on the street and suddenly – someone else's quote-unquote trash can become your treasure. Well, and, and to your point, even after they signed the rookie class, they have plenty of money to be able to do those kinds of things. Used to, in the past handful of years, it's been, hey, we got to stay right here because we need float money for transactions throughout the year. And Lord knows with the injuries and things in the past, that has certainly uh, been a thing they've needed. They'll take six of them to camp. And so the, the, the number six will, tight ends, six tight ends, the, 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 that will be the number that they will take to camp. And so they've still got various avenues to be able to do that. And all of you make you know, very real points about about the way the roster will be built. All right. So the Titans currently with three, three quarterbacks, Malik Willis, Will Levis and Mason Rudolph, who comes over from the Steelers. Coach Mack used to be you would take four quarterbacks Training camp is much different now. Not as many live practices. Probably just stick with three. You think? I think they'll probably stick with three, and plus it's a new offense, you know. And so, you know, you, Will Levis needs all the reps that he can get, you know, in, in this new offense. That'll be something else, something to to, to look at. And, and Mason Rudolph, I mean, is a veteran football player, so he's you know he's he's been through camps. And again, Malik Willis, this will be a brand new offense for him. So I, I think we're looking at three right there uh, with the 90. All right, four running backs on the current roster. Tajay Spears, Tony Pollard, Hassan Haskins, Julius Chestnut. What do you figure that number is going into camp in the running back core? Six. They, they will, they'll take six. They'll bring six there. So you can see, you know, with the 70 they have on there, once you start adding up, the extra ones that you've asked me about how to fill out the positions, you can fill that up pretty quick, but I think they'll have six. The running back position is one where you're often able to grab a guy, and who knows, like Julius Chestnut was. Julius Chestnut was playing really good football when he injured the hamstring last year. He was playing special teams. He had a very good preseason. In his second year out of Sacred Heart, you saw development out of him. Uh, you know, just a reliable football player. Haskins had the off-field problem and an injury, and the off-field problem has cleared itself up at this point. He will be coming back from injury, but he's an orig originally a fourth-round pick who was a special teams demon in 2022. Here's what's interesting about this. Some coaches, and Coach Mack, I really want your opinion on this. Some coaches – love to carry four tight ends, and three of them are going to play on a majority of special teams units. Some coaches love to carry more running backs, and they're going to play the outside of the starter, the bell cow, they're going to play on a majority of special teams. We don't know how Brian Callahan is going to want to work that, not just on his 53, but on his 48 on game day. And so as we go into his first training camp, watching how he shapes things – does he carry extra safeties for those jobs? Does he carry extra tight ends? Does he like a wide receiver or two to do that? That is to be determined. No, absolutely, it is. And I mean, and you've got you know you've got a new re you've got a new special teams coach. All of that stuff goes into, and you're 100 percent you're 100 percent correct. You kind of look back at what what they did at Cincinnati. They had a lot of tight ends. Mm -hmm. They had a lot of tight ends. You know, is 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 what they did. That doesn't mean that's what he has to do here. And so uh, I know just you know being uh, with Rand Carthon you know, for five years, uh, tight ends are something. But also they're gonna they're gonna need more running backs just because they need more sure. legs for training camp. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's uh, that's that's going to be absolutely the case. They're going to need six Coach Mack figures, and that makes sense. Right now, ten wideouts. You think they'll carry twelve? Is twelve. What? Yes. You think? That, and back to the special teams thing. Nick Westbrook Akine re-signed one of your best special teams players over the last four years. Well, and in that twelve, you're kind of looking and see where Colton Dow's going to be when camp starts. You know, because he'll he'll be a number, but we don't know. I don't know. I don't think any of us know where he will be 
you know, health-wise, going at, at to what time. He'll be back. You just don't know when he will be back. That goes into camp, too, because the, the people in training camp that their legs wear out the quickest are corners and receivers because they run all the time, every day. Every day practice is full. They are running. So you want a, a pretty good number of of just healthy legs at that position for training camp. Right now, five safeties. Elijah Molden, Shaheem Carter, Amani Hooker, Matthew Jackson, and Mike Brown. So they'll have to add... They'll add one more. One more. So they'll go with six. Inside linebackers with Cedric Gray drafted in the fourth round. They're at eight. Uh, Otis Reese, Chance Campbell, JoJo Doman, Jack Gibbons, Garrett Wallow... Kenneth Murray, Luke Gifford, and again, Cedric Gray. Outside linebackers, edge guys, five right now. Kayla Murphy spent the majority of last year on the practice squad. Thomas Rush spent the whole year on the practice squad. And then three veterans of the roster, Arden Key, Harold Landry, Rashad Weaver. They need some more there, don't they? Two more. Two more. And then defensive linemen uh, with – Devondre Sweat added, Sebastian Joseph Day, Keandre Coburn, Shaquille Brown, T.K. McClendon, Quentin Bohanna, and Jeffrey Simmons. How many were there? You count Sweat as one or two humans. Well, <laughs> they'll take they'll, they'll get they'll get one or two more of those. I you know and, and again I want to see how I haven't asked him. I mean I've I've worked with him and I know what we did when I was with him for five years there at the round. I don't know how he's going to set up his base defense yet and until we see it that will that will play a part in all of that at 242 the Tennessee Titans select James Williams from Miami he played rover safety for the Hurricanes Rhett yeah he was a three-year starter for the Hurricanes and you're right a rover safety uh, Lance Gidry was his D coordinator there you're talking about 6'4", 231, got an 80 and a quarter inch wingspan, ran a 4'6", 5'40", at the combine at that size, 161 in his first 10, a 30-inch vertical leap, 9'9", nine, nine broad jump, uh, very tall, very stretched out, very long frame on this guy, Mac. Yeah, well, th- this guy here, and again, I, I keep saying I know Denard Wilson. I know the, the defense that I was involved with Denard for five, five years, a lot of different packages this guy will fit you know some different packages you can drop this guy down you can play overhang with him and when i say overhang it's an off the ball uh blend between a, a, a strong safety and an outside linebacker this guy's an excellent blitzer this guy can 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 blitz Rhett talked about his arm length he's a he's an athlete but he's played a lot of ball at a pretty high level i'm, gonna, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with him a lot of safeties convert to linebacker it's it's done quite a bit are you saying you feel like he can convert to the linebacker position that is basically the one that kenneth murray figures to play in this defense no i, I think it, it'll be i think it'll be different I, I think i think he's different because he has played he's played you know a little bit in the back end too and, and again when, when I, I talk about the different defensive packages that Denard comes from that I was involved with him with. I mean, it's it, it, it sometimes it's three of those kind of guys on the field at the same time because this is a blitzer, this is a pass rusher, this is a guy, this is a guy that you can match tight ends. You can match him on tight ends. It's going to be interesting to see how they use him. Matt, can you define a rover safety? What does that term mean? You're going to drop down. You're going to drop from the top down, and then you're going to be in an overhang. An overhang position is 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 like a three by four outside wherever the tackle box is. And you can match him, and you also they will use him quite a bit as a blitzer, as as to whether you're going to bogey and fake a blitz from one side, bring him from another. But the, a lot of times people like to call it a robber. You know, some some people will call it a robber. A lot of it depends on if you're showing a too deep scheme, then you want to drop down into a robber look, whether it's middle of the field robber, those types of things. That's what you're talking. A rover is, I mean, it's a catch-all phrase. A lot of people talk about robbers where you drop down and then coverage-wise you try to confuse the quarterback as to where this guy's going to be once the ball is snapped. So, Mike, this guy had a pedigree coming out of high school. He was a five-star guy. He was the number one safety in the 2021 recruiting class, the number four recruit in Florida behind his current teammate, J.C. Latham, edge pass rusher Dallas Turner, and his teammate that ended up playing at Miami with him, defensive tackle Leonard Williams III. 
How many games did they win in high school? I bet a bunch. I would say a got, got to be a lot. Well, he's probably 20 or 21 as well. Just turned 21 February 15th. So you're sort of betting on what he's going to continue to become based on what you've seen and how he can fit in a defense – and understanding, too, that – and you mentioned the different ways he could be played. When people hear safety, they think of a strong safety like what Blaine Bishop used to be and a free safety like what Marcus Robertson used to be. And it's not really played that way anymore in the two spots. No, especially in a, in a, in a multiple defense package, a multiple personnel defensive package. Not just a multiple package scheme-wise. It's a multiple personnel defensive package. All right. Mike, he was the number 15 recruit in the nation. And it, it, according to this, the highest ranked recruit in Broward County history. Whoa. And, and these guys. Some there's of some the, dudes came out of there. Yeah. Think, <laughs> some of wow. these guys always drop on draft day because people aren't sure what they are. Yep. Well, you got you got a plan. Right. You got to have a plan for, for, for a guy like this, but you've got the athletic ability that you go and look – just creativity-wise, and as I said, I've been with this defense for five years, and I know how much creativity there is to it. And this would seem to be the place, Amy, where the position tapes that they've come up with to say, this is what we want this safety to look like. This is what we want this linebacker to look like. These are the traits that we want that they could say, here's a guy that fits these traits for this position, let's go ahead and get it. 100%. You've got the model of what you're trying to attain, and then you find somebody who's still on the board who checks most, if not all, of those boxes. You can figure some other stuff out once you get them in the building. You know? For the vertical and horizontal board Rhett and I put together just for, for grins here, we had him in our fifth pod as a linebacker, and then we had safety in parentheses. Because when you watch him, that's what you get. I'm pretty excited about this because I know they have a plan for this guy. All right, so let's go through it. J.C. Latham, offensive tackle, Alabama at 7. At 38, Tavondre Sweat, defensive tackle, Texas. At number 106, remember the Titans had no third-round pick this year because of the trade they made to move up last year and get Will Levis. So in the fourth round with the sixth overall pick, of day three, Cedric Gray, linebacker, North Carolina. At number 146, Jarvis Brownlee, cornerback, Louisville. At number 182, Jaquan Jackson, wide receiver, Tulane. At 242, James Williams, safety, linebacker, however you want to term him, 6'4", 231, out of the U. The Titans selection at 252, a young man by the name of Jalen Harrell, edge from the national champion Michigan Wolverines. Rhett Bryant, can you give us a bit of a thumbnail on Jalen Harrell? 6'3 and 6'8, 250 pounds, hands nine and three quarters, 33 and a quarter arms, wing almost 82 inches, Mac, 37 inch vert. Nine foot, ten inch broad jump, and at his pro day, uh, a four six eight in the forty one six four in his first ten, a short shuttle of four three nine, seventy eight tackles at Michigan, uh, twenty of those for loss, eleven quarterback sacks, two forced fumbles, and three pass deflections. Thirty game starter for the Wolverines in forty five games played, six and a half sacks in twenty twenty three for Michigan coach. You had Jalen Harrell. On your board, you had him rated, and you had him in this pod. Well, I mean, we got lucky once. But <laughs> any, anyway, the seventh pod, just what you say, this is an athlete. They had, a, of course, they're the national champions, but this was a guy that, that showed up a lot. He, this is an athlete. They, they're, taking, they're taking a really good athlete there. But as you mentioned, Mike, three years at a major program like that, this is a guy I'd like to have if he's taken earlier. It wouldn't surprise me, but for sure. For sure, this is a guy, once it gets to the to the third day, you want to be able to get a hold of. I love this pick. 
Amy, you can never have enough pass rushers. You can never, ever, ever have enough pass rushers. I think every single year when we talk about what what we get excited about, I think we both get excited about pass rushers every year. It's something that this team, obviously, there's a need for. Um, and it, it's just, I think it's going to be a big part of what this defense is going to look like is that aggressiveness. And that comes from the edge a lot of times. Well, uh, when we talk about seventh pod, what do we always talk about, guys? Always talk about you're looking for traits. Red just read you the traits. This is a perfect traits pick. And Mike missed one game in college. And listen to this. Jim Harbaugh says he was the tone setter of the Michigan defense and earns respect from everyone in the program with his play personality. He added punt coverage to his special teams resume in 2023. Can you imagine being the tone setter for a Jim Harbaugh team? Woo! That has to be a thing. That's got to be just rowdy. I'm excited. SeatGeek is now the official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek, the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans, so Titans fans can fan. For Coach Dave McGinnis, Amy Wells, and Rhett Bryan, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us for the OTP. Bye-bye.